Yo guys, what's going on? So today I'm doing a just general tips how to play GeoGuessr video. My buddy spazzed it a couple and I thought they were really good. And I thought they were fun, so I wanted to try it. This is what I came up with. Basically, I just played through a couple games of a diverse world, no moving, explaining what I'm doing, how I play the game. I ended up getting just an absolute bonkers guess in the video too, which makes it extra juicy, extra nice. If you guys want to see more tips, videos, stuff like that, um, I can show you guys more like guidelines for like learning how to play the game, all that. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. It's free. It helps me a ton. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys like the video. If you have any questions, you want to see more, let me know. And let's get into the shit. Oh, all right, let's get into the video. What I tend to look at three things. I'm going to look at the Google car, infrastructure, and landscape. You can paint a picture from all that stuff. You put the pieces of what you see there together, and then that's how you make your guess. So right away, I see some bollards, heavy on a corner. We have white lines all over the road, white paint on the bottom of the trees. Um, when I turn around, yep, I should see a little antenna here. And then I actually have different bollards at the corner than I do on the side of the road. Oh, shit. Gross. Uh, that looks kind of wide, no? White paint on the bottom of the trees, white antenna. When I look at this with the white lines on the trees, there's not really much going on infrastructure wise. All we have are bollards and these. I actually think it's Russia, and the reason being Russia uniquely just has a ton of bollards on the corners of all their roads. It's kind of a feature you specifically see there. The rest of this, the landscape doesn't feel distinctly Russian to me. Um, so the the only thing that really makes me feel confident in that is just the heavy array of bollards on the corners. And I, I really don't think you see that anywhere else. It looks kind of European. I'm gonna assume it's somewhere in here and here. Uh, people will say it was Coachella. I'm gonna go close to Moscow. It was much further south in Russia near Krasnodar. So those bollards, again, just swamp, swarming the corners as Russia. Ah, and it looks like we have another Russia seed because we see bollards all over the corner, huge intersections seemingly for no reason. We have a cool little building up here. We look at the plates. There's no blue, so they're, they're not EU plates. Back-to-back -back Russia on the first seed. You love to see it. It's a bit mountainy, a bit more hilly. I'm gonna go out here. It was a bit further. We still got 4,000 points though, which is good. Chelya Bing's Kedge would have really paid off for about 4,400. Ooh, next round we have these yellow stripes. We have a one. Key thing you're gonna see here is the utility poles. These are unique utility poles. You only find these in Taiwan. In South Korea, you'll see the same stripe pattern, but it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. The bottom of the pole will look like the top. And here we know we're in Taiwan. We're gonna do a quick pan around. We see Chinese, it fits, it fits. Um, we have, when we look north, some hills here. We don't really see any mountains to the north. And that's a useful clue for us in guessing. We do see a bunch of mountains to the south. It seems to wrap around to the left. But the reason that's a big clue is because Taiwan is basically a giant mountain. And so, I think we're likely somewhere in here if we're not seeing any hills to the north. If we were over here, we would see that park. Um, could still be somewhere down here where it's flat the rest of the way down. Could be somewhere over here. Uh, yeah, let's go Mayali County. <clears throat> and we were just on the other side of that. So we end up getting 4981 just because we look at the landscape and we know those poles are Taiwan. Hmm, 492, red building construction. Uh-oh. Uh, crack my arm, my arm hurts. Oh, I did my arm. Um, this red construction seems Scandinavian. All the trees seem Scandinavian. This little 492 sign. Hmm, a double pole. Hmm, this van looks like it's seen better days. And a short antenna. Huh. Wooden pole here. I don't like this pole. This pole throws me because I don't know things well. I think this is a Finnish sign though. So I am leaning towards Southern Finland here. Uh, you see a lot of coverage like that kind of all over in this area. When you get further north, it tends to look a little bit more dank. Uh, guess exactly where we thought it was. Get 45, 46, uh, right in the center of there. 
that was uh again just to finish one that that sign i'm pretty sure is specific to finland and finland roads this is a good one so we have a single lane concrete road um we can see utility pole here a round metal pole super tropical okay um, we have white plates on the car and I can kind of see language there. Can't really make it out. But the one thing I was going to say is these concrete one-lane roads remind me specifically of Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and the Philippines. Now, this isn't the Bangladesh because the landscape looks different. I'm just talking about the size of the road. Uh, it, I would think this is Philippines or Sri right away. And then Sri Lanka, typically you'll see a blur on the car. So when I look at this and I don't see what looks like any round script, I definitely think we're in the Philippines. And then narrowing down exactly which island is very difficult. Um, I typically, you know, recommend the Panay Hedge. You can do Maz Bait, uh, Ormok. I like to do Cebu. I don't mind going a little bit south because you get more points if it is. And then that's going to pull me more points, 4,700. If I went Panay, I'd lose some points. It just gets me more on a, a Luzon Island Hedge. But that was extremely helpful. And despite two rush rounds, we end up getting 21-5. Because we were able to pick up the regions in Finland, huge score in Taiwan, and the Philippines. Let's do another one, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm popping off right now. <laughs> um, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention, too, is I think if you're new to the game and your goal is to learn the game, you should play No Moving. Uh, the reason you should play No Moving is because you play more games, you see more seeds, you see more stuff sooner. If you play Moving, you're going to spend a bunch of time on one round where you're just clicking and clicking and clicking and looking for different visual clues rather than learning to make the most out of picking up every clue from the spawn. That's what, that's the difference. You want to pick up every clue you can in the spawn. So I recommend playing No Moving. I started Moving and when I switched to No Moving, it helped a ton with my progress on the game. Back to this, we have white stripe lines. Ooh, we have what looks like EU plates, but with no blue on it. That one's got blue on it. Ooh, old Mercedes. A little tractor trailer passing somebody. I don't know what that says. Looks like it might not be English. Oh, we look behind us and, oh yes, we have the telltale flag. So let's pretend that flag wasn't there. You see tow map. Now, seeing non-EU plates is kind of rare outside of Russia and Ukraine. And typically would happen in North Macedonia. I think I've seen it like once in Albania. But Albania has a mixture of blue on both sides, sometimes red on the plates, and then EU plates. So their plates are a bit more varied. When you see, when it looks like you're in EU, you don't see overwhelming Cyrillic, so you're not in Russia, and you see a long plate with no blue, it's almost always Macedonia in my experience okay so the flag does confirm that for us yeah let's just go Macedonia move on to the next round here I'm gonna clip right in. let's go Belez <laughs> not how it's pronounced and ooh right on the border on the lake down here by clock tower can we see the clock tower can we see it no sad so we start off that one good, 4,700 next round. Ooh, interesting, we have yellow middle line. Okay, you'll see on the utility poles, we do have that caution stripe, right? Now, in Taiwan, it goes all the way to the bottom. In South Korea, it does not. Here is the clue, South Korea has black car. You see the poles then, it doesn't have that. So if there's no poles and you see black car, we take a look, we see ooh, kind of the rice paddies. Asian in architecture where you see those style roofs for sure so you typically know you're in South Korea this looks like a little uh, basin we're in the mountains South Korea topography is very mountainous in general um, I like to hedge Daegu if it's not a city if it's most of the super urban stuff is here you'll also see Busan Pohang um, like Gummy and Daegu is a good mountain rural one, so it's going to cover that whole area. And we go Gummy, we get another 4,700 points. It is near Daejeon. But yeah, when it looks more city, you're better off going somewhere on this coast. Uh, you will lose if it's Busan, but just 
is playing the odds. Get a good score there. Ooh, this is a good one. Awesome. So this one right away looks like U.S. Canada. Uh, U.S. Canada can often be a 50-50. You look at the utility poll, can be helpful. Uh, we have a big old red fire hydrant. Cool. <coughs> <coughs> Um, we see a sign here. We do have a area code. Doesn't really help us. Now, the main thing that I want to look at here is the license plates and the, the road signs. License plates can tell you where you are if you know them. Um, it's really hard to study and learn them, however, so it's not a telltale giveaway. Now, road signs I like to look at because green and white road signs can be seen in both Canada and U.S. are more common in the U.S. Blue with white letter road signs can be seen in both US and Canada. A little more common in Canada, again, in my experience. This guy just screams, I live in the US. What the? Look at this yard. Oh my goodness. He's got the he's got the supercharged Audi dude. He's got the regular Audi dude. I'm looking at these plates and I think they could be Rhode Island. No, not Rhode Island. What state am I thinking? Maybe it's Minnesota. Land of 10,000 lakes. We got a lake. I'm going Minnesota. You know what? I'm going to go nice, pretty Minnesota. See if we can find ourselves a nice little lake. Let's go with Waconia. I like Waconia. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. It's not. Oh, my God, dude. Uh, Next round. All right, I'll show you this one. We got cows. We have mirrors. This is a super meta car clue. And BR, I noticed a lot of people get this country wrong. Yo, legend. Um, this is Guatemala. Um, a lot of cars have bars and mirrors, but Guatemala tends to have what feels like more distinct mirrors. And then when you see the yellow single stripe, it's Guatemalan Mexican. Uh, it looks South American, um, bit rural. What's cool about this one is that um guatemala has a lot of a lot of coverage for the country but it typically stops up near flores because Tikal is one of their most famous places to visit it's a ancient ruins um you see a lot more mountains here so when it tends to be like these rolling hills and flatter i like this area more i'm just gonna go right in the middle hedge our points it could have been either road so that maximizes my points there 48 77 and then last round hmm mm hmm okay this one's actually hard we have double yellow lines long antenna what looks like black car and we don't have many sign clues now you'll see the light poles don't really have anything but i think this is a 50 50 between taiwan and south korea and the reason i think that is because of this car um i know it can appear in either one and i'm just not sure which and then you'll see these signposts. They do have the caution tape on the bottom. This might be the toughest seed for me so far. And I see that when I see it all the way to the bottom, I'm back in on Taiwan. Now this looks coastal. There's a big old hotel there. Like all these reeds. Uh, I can't see mountains in any direction. It's super flat, which makes me think it's kind of a unique piece of the country. Like, I can't see anything that way. It just screams coastal. So when I look at Taiwan, please be Taiwan. I really think there's two areas it could be. One is here. Yep. Just here. But because we can't see any mountains in that direction... It makes me think there might be a larger gap of distance, which makes me think 
could be here. Now, one thing you'll notice about the compass when I zoom in and out, it zooms where your cursor is. So like right there, I'm not due center north here. That's due center north. So that's how I can tell my road direction. It slants a little bit more than you'd think. Hmm. I don't think I'm that close to the coast. I think I'm probably somewhere in here. And that's my guess. Oh no, it was the north side of the country. It was much further north. Wow, I'm actually surprised. I thought the coast was on the other side. But it happens. So 23741, dude, two games. I hope this stuff's helpful for you. Can't believe I got that absolutely bonkers. I can't do it. This was crazy, but I hope you guys like it. I hope this helps you get better at GeoGuessr and, you know, get those better scores and win those VRs. Make sure you check out my friend Spaz. He does the exact same style of video. I was inspired by him. Uh, he's awesome. GG's.